Cat museum, cat square and shops full of cat inspired souvenirs are just the tip of the catish iceberg when you arrive in Cotor Montenegro. These furry animals are everywhere, on the balconies, streets, parks and even in restaurants, shops or boats. They are a part of the city and its culture and have been coexisting with humans for centuries. And this is not the only city where animals and humans share their space. As our cities grow and animals' habitat is shrinking, they are adjusting to new surroundings. They want to join us on our morning jogs in the amazing new park or chill with us while we have our coffee in our roof garden. But can we really live together in peace? By 2050, two-thirds of all human beings will be living in the cities. But concrete jungle is for suckers. What we want is to bring nature with us as well, which doesn't mean just more plants, but also some animals. The question is, how do we include animals in our cities without this being harmful to us or to them? Because while we don't mind cuddling with our pets on the couch or visiting the animals in the zoo, we don't really know how to deal with the animals during the rush hour. Around the world, different initiatives are teaching people how to interact with animals. For example, Project Wild Song is educating people on how to interact with wildlife, in that case with wolves and coyotes. They organize workshops and seminars teaching people how they can live in harmony with these majestic creatures. You can go for a hike with a wolf or coyote or paint a picture with them. How cool is that? Adam Chavez and his team train their falcons and hawks to scare away rottens from landfills, birds from golf courses or seagulls from crowded beaches, protecting animals and people. Both of these organizations are teaching people how to interact with animals and showing that amazing results can be achieved without the use of force or animal cruelty. And these are not the only two examples of animal-human collaboration. Throughout history, humans and animals have been working together a lot. During the Second World War, pigeons were carrying messages, dogs were and still are used for hunting or rescuing as sled dogs or guard dogs. Bats are eating all those annoying mosquitoes and bees are pollinating our fruit trees. Cats of Kotor have been brought to the city by sailors from all around the world to protect the city and its people from rats and mice. And they are still doing their job, I haven't seen any kitten unemployment office in the city. They became the city's mascot and are welcome everywhere. There is also plenty of food and water left around the city especially for them. And by increasing sales of cats, food and souvenirs, they're even helping locals to earn some money. And Kotor is not the only city where humans and animals live side by side. In Itsukushima, a Japanese island, deer and humans share beach and sidewalk, and killing a deer is illegal. In the past, such killing was punishable by death. And let's not forget India and their cows, or Gibraltar and their monkeys. All of these places have made room for animals. The city planners are taking animals into account. It's obvious that the greener our cities become, the more attractive they will become for the wildlife. And not just small birds, bugs and butterflies, but also eagles, deer, raccoons or coyotes. In general, we like the idea of sharing our green spaces with wildlife. It makes it even better. But what we don't like, and neither do animals, is encountering them while driving or going to work through the city center. So what are the architects doing to solve this problem? Well, firstly, we have to understand that animals are not walking on the dirty pavements just because they want to go window shopping. If there are two or more parks located nearby, well, it's only logical that animals will want to enjoy all of them. So the area between them will turn into a corridor, whether it's a street or a train station. Knowing that, the solution is clear to the architects. We need green corridors for the wildlife. These corridors can be a small tunnel under a big street or large path connecting the city parks together. This way the animals can stay in nature and humans can window shop all on their own. Living happily ever after is possible, but just like we have to learn to look both ways before we cross the street, we also have to learn how to communicate with animals in a proper way. Petting certain animals and leaving others alone, keeping our dogs on the leash and not feeding certain animals are just a couple of things that we have to do in order to educate ourselves and to make room in our cities for our furry and non-furry friends. And that's it for today, thank you for watching! Now tell me in the comments, is your city animal friendly? Like this video and share it, because animals sure won't! And subscribe to this channel to not miss our next video! And see you then! Bye bye!